All right, what's going on, y'all? This is a building phase update. I, I documented my whole competition prep, and then I documented, or I've, I've been in the process of documenting the whole building phase. Since the building phase takes much longer, I'm not as consistent with putting out the content because it's just a long game approach, and there's there's less relevant things to tell y'all, changes to tell y'all on a week-to-week -week basis. So, it's been a while since the last one. I figured I'd update y'all with this one. Let's talk about nutrition first and foremost. Um, so I've got my macros plus pulled up here. I'm doing, I've had to increase the number of meals because it's just getting to a point where the calories are high enough where if I did an OMAD approach, it wouldn't make sense. If I do two meals, it kind of is still uncomfortable. So I'm doing about three meals a day right now. I start off in the morning with a coffee. I have four tablespoons of heavy cream, one tablespoon of butter, and one tablespoon of MCT oil for a total of 45 grams of fat and 411 calories in that first a.m. drink. Uh, then I work out. Um, meal one is the first meal. I typically have that within a two hour window of training. That consists of one whole keto brick, a can of sardines, I use the Wild Planet sardines, and six whole eggs, which I scramble up. That's meal one. Meal two is Basically, I, I use, I got some certified Piedmontese, that's what this big box is. Um, so I'll, I'll get, I'm gonna be eating this every single day for the next month, so I just ordered a ton of it. Let me show you what I got. Um, certified Piedmontese. Piedmontese is a strain of cattle. It's a, it's kind of noisy. It's a breed of cattle, basically, and it's a leaner type of meat. There's less fat, and it's a leaner cut of meat, which you typically don't want on the ketogenic diet. However, uh, this is still super, super tender, even without the fat, and I'm getting enough added dietary fat to help the macro ratios balance out. Um, so this is chuck eye. I bought 32 of these chuck eye steaks. They're 12 ounces each. Uh, again, they're very lean. They don't use antibiotics or hormones at all. And I've been just throwing these in the air fryer for about seven minutes per side once they've thawed, or I'll do a reverse sear on the Traeger if I wanna go that route. But this is the first time I've gotten the Chuck Eye steaks. I'm a huge fan of their uh, the ribeyes, and Chuck Eyes have a similar nutrient profile to ribeye, but they're much cheaper than ribeye. I don't like them as much as the ribeye, but in order to buy 32 at a whack and not have to you know, quench up too bad because of the price tag, I just went with the Chuck Eye. So that is my meal too. I'll, I'll add um, some butter on this. I put three tablespoons of butter on that steak. And I've also been cooking this um, marrow bones with the chuck eye. So I'll buy these at Whole Foods. This entire package was $9.58. And marrow bones are incredibly nutrient dense. I put these on the uh, Traeger grill as well. You can also put them in the Instant Pot. You can roast them in the oven but you roast them at a high temp, like 450 degrees or 500 degrees for 20 to 40 minutes. And then basically all that marrow in there congeals. And then I basically just pull that out with a fork or a knife and I put that on my steak. It's delicious. Um, that is my second meal. That is 1,100 1, calories, 65 grams of protein and 100 grams of fat. And then my third and final meal is at some point after that steak dinner, and what I've been doing there is I'll get some keto-friendly yogurt that doesn't have any added sugar, and then I'll mix in about two tablespoons of this mascarpone cheese. I don't usually recommend a bunch of dairy. Um, I don't need a whole bunch of dairy usually, but this meal is just easy to get down. I'm, I'm taking enough calories now where the easier it is to you know, assimilate it, absorb it, and digest it, the better. And I'll mix in one scoop of this ancient nutrition multi-collagen protein with that yogurt and mascarpone cheese, mix it all up, and then it's kind of like eating a chocolate mousse in the evening hours, so it kind of satisfies whatever little sweet tooth I have, and just an easy meal to get down. The total for the day breaks down to 3,670 calories, 319 grams of fat, 20 grams of total carbs, and 170 to 180 grams of total protein, uh, which is a 78 percent fat ratio. So 78% of my calories are coming from dietary fat, 
but I'm still taking in a ton of protein and all is well in that regard. That's what my nutrition looks like now. But again, I'm scaling this up gradually. I'm, I'm to a point now on the calories, but I don't have to be as aggressive with increasing them. I typically increase them now at this point on a, you know, every two weeks to every month basis, just depending on how I'm feeling and how I'm performing. So that is my nutrition at this phase in the building. All right, ladies and gents, in dealing with this whole building phase update, I thought I would give you all an in-depth view at what my workout and training routine is looking like and the progressive overload principles that I've been incorporating and the progress I've seen in that regard. So I've got a detailed spreadsheet here, a Google spreadsheet that we'll dive into. I'm also gonna link this same spreadsheet in the description below. So if you want to dive in, download that, and use it for your own personal benefit, by all means, feel free. But in the meantime, let's just dive into my personal copy here and I'll show you how I've been able to implement the progressive overload in my training with my eight day rotational split thus far. All right, so here is how it's structured. I've got several blocks down here below. This is block one. So this is basically each block is one of those um, eight day cycles. So here we have block one. Uh, day one is legs. You can see I've got my sets, my weight, my reps at those sets or at that weight and the total volume that yields. The highlighted green cell here is the total volume for that day. So you can see I've got a standalone squat day. On the other days, I've got like shrugs, dumbbell shoulder press, military press, upright row. This is one in which the heavy focus is on shoulders and the hypertrophy focus is on back. I'm not tracking the sets and reps and volume for the auxiliary movements, I'm only tracking the stats on the primary compound movement. So squats obviously being one, military press being one, um, close grip bench press being one, and then I've got a rest day there on day four. Day five is back and biceps. My deadlift, conventional deadlift is the stat that I'm tracking there, or the exercise that I'm tracking there. Day six is high volume legs. So since I've only got a standalone squat day, I wanted to have another leg day with more variety in my movements. So that's what you see here. And on this one, it's sumo deadlift that I'm tracking. Uh, day seven is heavy chest hypertrophy delts and flat barbell bench press is the one I'm tracking here. And then day eight is a rest day. So, and then this, this is the total volume for that entire uh, eight day rotational split there. So as you can see, you know, if we go through, like let's just look at the total volume here. So keep that number in mind, 74,045. The goal is to implement some progressive overload. Um, so block two, you know, the total is 76,000. Block three, the total is 77,000. And then I had a deload week here after week three. So basically I just did 50% weight on all the movements there. And then back at it on block four. And then ideally coming out of a deload week, you are able to increase the total volume, which I did here I am at 79,000. And then the current week that I'm in is block nine, and I've only done the squat day portion of that. And then everything else beyond squats is just repeated from last week because I haven't done that yet. And today actually was squat day, and I got 10 reps on that 315. So let me update that. So I've got 20,350 just on the squats alone. And then if you go through if I do not go up from what I had last week, which I will go up from that, but if I do not, I'm at 85,225 total volume. So basically, in that nine week span, I've gone from 74,000 total volume to 85,000 total volume. And that's the name of the game. Like this is very incremental changes. Sometimes it's, it's more, it's nothing more than just one additional rep each week, but one additional rep compounded over you know, several iterations of this cycle, that's the progressive overload we're looking here. And that pretty much concludes what I've got going on here with the rotational split, the eight day heavy hypertrophy rotational split. I've really been loving this. Every muscle group is basically getting worked twice a week except for biceps. But again, biceps, I mean, you're working biceps quite a bit throughout the other movements, the other exercises, and biceps are not one of my lagging body parts. So I'm not really concerned about only working that once a week, but everything else is getting targeted twice during that eight day cycle with a heavy focus and hypertrophy focused. So far, everything has been super solid with the building phase. I'm able to increase my calories, I'm able to increase my training progressive overload. All of my lifts are going up week after week. I feel great. Um, my joints are fine. 
My strength is fine. Everything's everything's moving and trending in the right direction. I'm able to maintain a lean physique. I still have visible abs. I still have cuts in my quads. I still have some definition in my back, especially in my upper back. I still have striations in my chest. So I'm doing like cable flies or something like that. Obviously, I'm not competition lean, but that's not the whole point right now. The whole point is to simply maximize the the time in a caloric surplus, build as much lean tissue as possible, which I feel I'm doing as is seen via the ability to continually progressively overload the training. And I'm able to increase my calories without any adverse effects. Um, my, my weight has been holding pretty constant at about 185 pounds. And my body composition and body fat, I believe, is holding pretty constant as well. I'll get another updated DEXA here soon, but I have not done a DEXA since I got that initial DEXA. Um, the at-home in-body scan is holding pretty constant right there between 15 and 17% body fat depending on my hydration levels. Um, so everything's been good in that regard as well. But all in all, I've been super pleased with the keto building phase thus far. Just keep maximizing this time and making the most of it. And that's what I'm going to do. So until the next update, I'll see you all around.